Hello friends, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Max. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Glad to have you as a part of my channel community. Um, we're gonna make this cute little pajama bag bear. Now, if, if you're a part of my channel uh, and you've been with me for since I've been on, about a year and a half now, I think it is, just a little more, um, you will know that I made a, a baby doll pajama bag on my Abbey Circular Knitting Machine. And it went over so well, I thought I gotta, you know, actually somebody, uh, a loomer asked me, can you please make one uh, on the loom? And so I am happy to do so, but I made it a bear instead. So you can make this pink like this for a little girl. You can make it blue, yellow, purple, whatever color you want. And it's just gonna be something that they love. Now I remember as a kid that we had pajama bags and so many comments on my, on my uh, other video um, regarding the memories that this has brought back for them too. So I hope that does that for you. This little bear is so adorable. It's gonna be loved by kids from young right up to old. It's gonna be one of those things they put in their hope chest um, because they cuddled it when they were little and it's all ratty by the time they're old. But it's a pajama bag. So we're gonna make this on our 36 peg loom and we're also gonna use the 12 peg loom. But if you undo this little bottom here, now I didn't get out to make to buy some kids pajamas to, for this video and I didn't wanna to wait to post it. So I just put a big adult t-shirt in there just to show you how much room and kids aren't going to fold their stuff so they're going to just throw it in there which is the purpose right <laughs> they're going to throw it in there they're going to give this a little tie and if they can't tie their mommy or their big sister and brother will tie it for them until they learn how and you know what i know kids that are 10 8 10 years old who would love this on their bed even older so they know how to tie it's not not a problem but i think that the lace just makes it so so more precious okay and there it is with something stuffed in there <laughs> he's kind of he's kind of loosely loosey goosey here but here we go isn't he gorgeous i love him i think he's just absolutely beautiful precious to make and you know what once you make one you can whip through another one with no problem um and when if they don't want to put their pajamas in there and they just want to Take those out, let me just throw those over there and tie this up. You've got a soft little cuddle toy, okay? That they will take with them and cuddle and love and enjoy. And so it's it's beautiful both ways. Hide little things in there. It doesn't have to be pajamas. However, I made it with the idea of a pajama bag in mind, but the ocean's your oyster. Is that how it goes? The world's your oyster. However that saying goes. <laughs> Same thing, you can have, make it fill it with whatever they like. But anyways, um, I've used Forever Fleece Finer Yarn from Bernat. Now this ball is um, 385 yards, 280 grams, and I didn't even use half of it, so there's lots in there. The, the thing is with this yarn, my friends, at least here in Canada, you can't get it in this form anymore. You can get them in solid colors and uh, like in the same in the same yarn, um, but you can't get this exact one like this. Um, but you know what? It is um, a five bulky. So use your favorite five bulky yarn, and uh, and you'll have the same outcome. Or use a double strand of four weight worsted weight yarn, and uh, it'll work for you as well. Uh, so the options are the pattern's still the same. So the options are limitless. I hope you can find this though because this is so luxurious and soft. I am absolutely, I just think it's gorgeous. I love it, can't wait to make more. Um, so I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, please be sure and show me your projects, your finished projects in my YouTube uh, or in my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. Post the link with it so others can easily access it as well. And if you're in other groups, go ahead and post it there too and, and get the pattern out there. I would uh, appreciate that actually. I'm beginning to build my loom knitting library um, and uh, and I hope you stick around and follow me and share, share it with your friends. All right, friends. So once you're ready to start, we're going to start. But don't forget to like and subscribe and be a part of my channel community. I sure appreciate you. I've got my beautiful orange 36 peg loom. <laughs> <laughs> my loom hook that uh, doesn't coordinate and we've got this new boy thing I bought this when I was in the states this last little while it's a boy one and I tell you I'm gonna show you how it works because it's kind of cool you just take this thing is I didn't realize it at first but this thing is um in here and if you buy one of these look for it because it's stuck to the back here in the ins I, like i didn't realize it at first that was there and i was struggling to get this yarn through and then it clued in on me that there was a little thing to help me so you take your yarn and you just like hook it through that little 
hook there and you go from this wide part i think am i doing this right yeah i think you go from this wide part i get confused every time i do it i think Yikes. yeah just like that then you take this off you set that little guy aside so you're going from the from the wide part to the narrow part then we're going to put a slip knot on our tail add it to our anchor peg and i'm going to tighten it there and then we're ready to begin except for you gotta for for this particular yarn i find that it works the best if i go in the bottom of that loop up into that one and then up into that one okay and then i can begin casting on now this is new to me this little machine thing <laughs> handheld thing but so far like i've used it once i made this is um the second thing that i've i've done with this little thing and uh I think it works well. This brace of mine gets in the in the way, and that's crazy. It won't be on for too much longer, I hope. But we're going to, and then I find that if I have this so that the yarn is coming to the back there, um, it works better. But I'm going to go around. We're going to cast on with an um, E-Rock cast on. So I'm going to go in between this first and this last peg, just like that. Going to come in front and behind and around, just like that. In front and behind and around. Oops just like this all the way around okay so that's an e-wrap i'm gonna just get some slack out of my ball here so again you're going in front and around just like that all the way around i love this little yellow gadget i think it's it's awesome it works great if you have the slack taken out of your ball um if you got to pull on the slack and pull on this thing then it doesn't work quite so well but I'm still getting used to it, so oops. So there you go. And then we're gonna just keep e-wrapping like this. Obviously I'm still getting used to it, but you know, again, it's this crazy brace that's bothering me. And then we're gonna just, maybe that's a better, there we go, now I'm in the swing of it. Now that's our first e-wrap. We're gonna go ahead, hold this little um, tail there. We're gonna push all these down because we got to finish our cast on row. We're going to do this again. We're going to pick this up, pull it down and through. And then I'm going to make sure that I have the same tension that I was using. Pick up my loom and then we're going to just e-wrap again. Now that we've pushed those loops down, we're going to go ahead and just e-wrap at the top again, just like this. This thing, guys, if you don't don't have one of these, go get one. Seriously, I I don't think it was like 3 or 4 dollars in Joanne at Joanne, but, um, wow, I'd pay way more for it. Don't tell the people that make it that though, because then they'll up the price, but <laughs> oops, sometimes it just gets a little tricky here if it gets stuck because this is a really fibrous yarn. Um, but no bother. You just gotta take your time to fix it. And then you just keep going. Take the slack out of your ball. I've got that last one wrapped there. I'm going to put this in front of the second one in front or the first one in front of the second one. Just hold it like that until I can get this last peg knit off. So I took the bottom loop over the top loop and over the peg. That's how I did it. We're going to take this yarn tail, put it between the first and the last. Here's my anchor peg and just get it out of the way. And we're going to knit off. So you take the bottom loop over the top loop. We're still on our cast on roll folks. Just like, what is that little black thing? Oh, I'll get that in a minute. Just like that, easy to do. Now there's lots of different ways you can pull the two different ways. You can take your, your loop from um, the top here. So you take your hook and you put it on top and then you swing it over like that. Lots of people prefer that. I can't do it that way. I like to scoop it up from the bottom and pull it over. And then I put my finger on top of the peg there as I'm going over and that's just my practice and it works well for me. So you do whatever works best for you. The thing is you just wanna get those loops over, okay? Here we go. Almost around. Just like so. I'm gonna take that out of the way here. I'm gonna go ahead, push down all those loops just with your fingers, just like that. I fell and slipped on the ice a couple weeks ago and uh, broke 
a couple little bones in my hand because we were flying out um, a few days after and I didn't have time to get the swelling down um, before they casted it they opted to do this which I'm so thankful for because it's it's um although it's a nuisance it's a lot better than wearing a cast but I do see a doctor this week and we'll see what he says but I think it's fine so now that we've done our cast on row we're going to begin our counting so just uh, a little explanation <laughs> as to why I'm wearing this thing okay so I've got this again on the tightest tension there that I like and I'm going to go in behind and in front just like that like a letter E and we're going to E wrap all of our pegs all around just like so I hope I'm giving giving you a good angle on this this will be considered row one now I don't know how you keep track of your rows but I mark mine when I'm finished, not when I'm starting my row, but when I'm finished my row, then I will mark. I have a Susan Bates um, little handheld counter that I left upstairs because I was uh, working on something else and I used it upstairs, so I'll mark it in a bit. But um, make sure you mark your rows because it's it's easy to forget. However, when you're illuminating, it's easy to count your rows too, isn't it? So however you choose to do that, but I'm gonna now take this in between the last peg and the first peg Wrap it in front of my first and my second one just so that I can hold it with my fingers there. Always knit off the last one first. And that is so that it holds your yarn in place and uh, you can let it go and it's not going to unravel all your, your work that you just did. Okay, so now I've knit off this one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knit off this next and the next all the way around. This is the E-wrap. So very easy. It's one of my favorite stitches. I mean, if wraps, there's, you can, you can do the U wrap or just the basic knit. However, however, um, you like, but for this particular project, we're going to use the E wrap. I love the looks of it. I think it gives it a nice, soft, chunky kind of texture and works perfect for this project. So we are going to knit off this whole row. Just like so. After you get two or three rows done, make sure you loosen your anchor peg here and just pop it in the back here um, so it doesn't pull on your work. So that is row one complete. Push down your row. Just like so. Okay, then you're going to go back and you're going to take your little gadget here and if you don't have one you just use your fingers to wrap of course i'm going to make sure there's some slack coming out of my ball because that makes it easier with this and then we're going to wrap again so just like that in an e-shape all the way around and then we're going to knit it if off. you were able to get some of this forever fleece finer yarn um and you've worked with it before you know that it can be very staticky so um it takes just a little bit of patience of course this little um mat that I have here doesn't help but uh, I'm spraying it with um, static guard every once in a while and it helps it has a nice rubber backing on it so I like to have it as my workstation just brand new that I bought um, okay but you're going to continue knitting like this e-wrapping taking the bottom loop over the top loop and you're going to do that for 32 rows okay remembering after the third I can do this now but you after the the second or third row you can take this off and pull it to the inside just like this get it out of the way otherwise it's going to um i'll use my loom hook to grab it if i have to there we go otherwise it's going to pull in here so you're going to keep wrapping and knitting off for 32 rows friends it doesn't take that long have fun grab yourself a cup of coffee um, or something that you like to drink and and uh, enjoy the process. This is we have a privilege of being crafters and making beautiful things and and uh, we need to enjoy it as we're doing it. So enjoy it friends and when you get 32 rows done come back and see me because we're going to then work on the head. All right friends take care and we'll see you soon. welcome back. I've got my 32 rows done and if you're joining me then that means you probably do too and I am fascinated by this because look at this yarn. Well I'm going to show you on the other piece because you're going to make two of these exactly alike um, and I've already made two but look at how this yarn works up in vertical lines. 
just like that. But you know what? When I use it on my Addy Circular Knitting Machine or my Centro, if you follow my channel, you know that uh, that um, I do a lot of circular knitting. It's horizontal, <laughs> same yarn, and that's how it knits up. This is like would be considered the true stitch because it's just a basic knit stitch, and uh, that's how it works up horizontally this way, vertically. <laughs> I, I think that's just fascinating and like the whole patterning is completely different in how the the um the yarn you know flows and so wow that's amazing to me I'm going to now now that we have that was just a little fun fact and you can go check my channel <laughs> um for you know the best thing to do on my channel is to check out the playlist because I have several different ones and you might find some inspiration there but we're going to cut off this working yarn. We're going to stick it between the first and the last peg, just like that. We're going to grab the color that we're going to use for our head. And I'm going to use a solid color, one that's not variegated. It matches. It's one of the colors that's in here, um, or close enough anyways. And so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this on my little hook. I'm going to go in. I am so thrilled with this thing. You guys, I knit those little circles around here. I had it flat like this and then I was knitting like that. And I am just like thrilled at how fast it's going. The hardest thing is to get this thing in there. Oops, because it's caught on the... um. And so some of you are probably laughing at me saying, well, no duh. Because <laughs> you've probably done this for a long time. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a slip knot on this. And we're going to add this to our first peg, just like that. Tie a knot, get that out of the way. And then, actually, we're not going to get it out of the way. We're going to pop it into the inside there. Then we're going to take this other one, our long tail. I'm going to cut it off, make it shorter. And we're going to tie these two together in a really tight knot. There's many ways of changing colors, but this is the way I pretty much do it all the time. Okay, And I'm going to cut that off. Now we've got our second loop on there, as you can see, um, ready to knit. So we're going to just go ahead. We're going to put our tensioner thing together like this and make sure I have my ball down on the floor. It's easier. And then I'm just going to go ahead and e-wrap all of these pegs. Okay, one right after the other. I tell you, you guys, Never mind, I've already gone on and on and on about this little thing, but anything that helps you make your work uh, more efficient and it's fun, oh, it's worth worth getting. Okay, so now I've got all my pegs knit. Wrap that around, hold it. I'm going to now knit off. I should have said I got all my pegs e-wrapped and now I'm going to knit off. We're going to do the exact same thing as what we were doing. Um, and this is now the head. It's a solid color and our break is going to be right in the right place for our neck. And we're going to do 15 rows. Okay, so you're almost done. 15 rows. Go ahead and e-wrap, knit off. E-wrap, knit off for 15 rows of this solid color. And when you're done that, meet me back. All right, so I'm finished my 15 rows. It's looking great. Friends, I wish we could talk to each other. <laughs> I wish that you could talk back to me and I could hear you. You're going to take your yarn tail and you're going to wrap it around your loom once and a half, about like that, okay? And you're going to cut that tail off and we're going to cast off. Grab your favorite needle for doing that job, minus the metal wool needles. It has like a little plastic loop in the end, so it's easy to thread your needle. You can get them at Walmart or Amazon. I just love them, okay? We're going to... Take our needle, go from the bottom up through that loop, just like that, through the, on the peg one. We're going to do the same thing for all the pegs. You can push these halfway down. Then we're going to go underneath the loop of peg two and up. This is going to give us a drawstring cast off at like where we're able to, to close it by a drawstring at the end. But don't um, cinch it tight after you get it off your project because uh, we got a, we have some sewing to do before we do that, okay? So I'm going to go all the way around. And once it gets a little bit tight, you can start removing some of the pegs that you worked. I always leave peg one on though, because I'm going to read, I'm going to do that one again so that this last one is joined to the first one. I'm going to just take two, three, four, five, 
And that's all I'm going to take off for now. And then I'm going to continue along, picking up those stitches, going from the bottom of the stitch and up. Do that all the way around your loom, casting off every peg. And when it starts to get a little bit tight, let's push this down a little bit so you can work with it. It's on halfway down your needle or down your peg. When it starts to get a bit tight like mine is already, you go back and you start taking off more of these stitches. And it will give you some tension in here and it won't pull so tight, okay? So go ahead, friends, take off all the loops. Release all your stitches from your pegs by casting off in this manner. And when you get to the end, see me back and I'll show you what I do with the last peg and the first peg, all right? I've made it all the way around, except for my last one, which is right here. I'm going to do the last one. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the first one. That just joins them all together. You don't have to do that first one again, but I like to. I don't want any gaps in the middle there between the two. And then I'm gonna release the rest of these stitches. And there you have it. Let's take a look. <laughs> this one's going more at a bit of an angle, but that's okay. And so is this side, but you know what? It's beautiful. And once we get this cinched, it's, it's going to be just like beautiful. Excellent. So always stretch out your work widthwise. And I don't go very, I don't pull on it too hard when I'm going widthwise with these big stitches. Okay. And lengthwise. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to make a second one just like that. And when you have them both done, we will move on to the next part. Now, the reason why I do two is because with this loose stitch, it's loopy. And, uh, and I just want to have a thicker um, piece so that you don't see what's on the inside. Now, you can double strand your yarn and do it that way if you like. Um, and then uh, just have a single layer here. But you also want a double layer at the top of the head because when we're going to stuff this, you do not want to see, there's nothing worse than seeing stuffing through a project. Okay, so we're going to, this is how, I'm, how I've chosen to do this. There's many ways of doing it. But I also think, um, like, I mean, with our circular knitting machine, the Addy or the Centro, um, we make we can make a long panel in and then fold one inside the other and have a double layer too. But I choose not to do that even on that machine for this project because I like my straight seams. When we seam this together, this is going to have a very beautiful edge. If you were to just pull one inside the other, it's, it's a little bit sloppier. So um, this is the part where we pay a little bit of attention to detail and we take a little bit extra work. It's not really any extra work because you're making two instead of a double length one. And uh, and it's going to be beautiful when we're done. So go ahead, make two of these just like this. Oh, this is so soft. I love this. It's going to be beautiful when it's done. And uh, when you have that finished, come back and see me, friends. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to tighten up these little loose ends here. Okay, this is a cast on and we're going to make it Nice and neat like that by tightening it up. So you're going to take your piece. This is the beginning of your project. You're going to find your tail. Why did I cut that off so short? You're going to pull on it a little bit just to see which direction it's coming from. Okay. So if I take that. And pull it from here. Then I know my loops are this. This was my last loop here. Okay. So that's that's where we're going to start. So we're going to roll that up. We're going to take this first one, we're gonna pull it just a little bit, then we're gonna take that next one and we're gonna pull it on the right side of that loop. Then we're gonna to go to the next one and we're gonna pull it, take the right side of the loop and we're gonna pull it. I don't want it really tight, I just wanna snug it up a little bit. And then you see it comes around like this, you're gonna take the right side of that loop and you're gonna just nicely pull it. Go to the top row, and we're going to do this all the way around and we're going to get a lot of slack, um, which you will find to be amazing because look how pretty that is already. Like it makes a huge difference. You don't want to leave it. And so we go to that next loop and pull. And you'll see, I'll just give you a closer up thing. We've got this coming out and it's going around like this. This is the piece that we're pulling. 
except for I don't want to pull it on that side and then get it tangled. So then pull, you can push it down like that. If that helps you, lay it down. My Velcro is sticking to the table. And you're just going to continue around like that. It's so easy. You know what? It's very therapeutic. It's fun. <laughs> Except for when your brace gets stuck to your little table. But that's okay. So here we go, friends. Look how much I've, I got on there already. It's that top row. You can't miss it. The, the, the key is to um, go in the opposite, opposite direction that you knit. And that how I showed you is very easy to figure out. Okay? So I am going to... If, if it's... When you go to pull on it, if it's tight, you know you've missed one in there somewhere. So, um, like if I went to pull on this one and it's tight, then I have to look a little bit deeper and I know I've missed this one. And don't pull and make a knot because then that won't be good either. Okay? There we go. Another way to figure it out, and I'll zoom in on this so you can see, is if I'm pulling on this, it's coming from this one here. Okay? Oops. Nope. No, it's not. Let me see here. I just what led you astray. Now I've got a mess here. So this one is coming. Oh, okay. If I lay it down this way, I've got to pull on this loop here. Don't pull on a loop. If, if you're having a hard, like if we, what happened just now to me, I don't want to edit, edit that out because um, even I saw it wrong. If you're pulling on something and it's not coming easily like this, then you've got the wrong the wrong tail and you're going to end up getting a knot in there. So follow my advice to what I just did and find the one that's easily pulled, that you can easily pull. Sometimes it gets a little bit confusing with these color changes because uh, I think I'm pulling on the pink, but it's actually changed to purple, so <laughs> it fools my eye. But you just keep grabbing that top loop. Oops, knocked my camera. So this top loop is right here. And pull, work that down. And keep going just like that, grabbing that tail, pulling it through, rolling that up a little bit, grabbing the next one, pulling it through. And you just do that over and over again until you get to the end. And then I'll see you when I get there. When you're at the end, Let me see, where's this one? Sometimes it can get tricky and I lose my place, but let's see. This one. And this one. Go very slowly. Because in all honesty, the last one I did, I got a knot here and then I had to... Uh, Spend uh, And then you just pull this. I had to spend a lot of time working it out. <laughs> okay, so then you pull on your slack and you can cut this off if it's really, really long. Um, but we're going to just leave it. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece. There are several ways you can sew this, but I'm going to, I'm going to use my needle. And I'm going to take, I'm going to follow this down. So that I have it nice and straight on the side here and then I'm going to use my needle to end thread sometimes like you can use a crochet hook and loop them back and forth um, as a slip stitch but we're not going to do that for this piece we're going to just take our tail and we're going to go in these loops and we're just going to sew them and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to pick up I've got two little bars on there and I'm going to go through the center of that loop and pick up two of those little bars and I'm going to pull that tight there. I'm going to smooth this out. Okay, bring it up and over. Then I'm going to go underneath this stitch and under the next one like that. And I'm going to do that all the way across, hoping that I have enough yarn on this tail. So into that bottom cast on stitch, out the next one, just like that. That's how we're going to close the end. And pulling that just nice and don't pull it too tight. You want it nice and, and uh, evenly tensioned. Okay, so go ahead and close that up at the end. Then you're going to knot it off. Hide your tail into the middle. 
and do it for your second piece. And when you have that done, I'll meet you back. There we go, I'm gonna tie a knot. Now I'm doing it this way because I'm putting, gonna put a little crochet edging on this, um, but if you don't want to put the edging on, then you just do your knot like this and you hide your tail. And you cut it off. And there you go, you've got a nice flat edge right across, that's the one. Okay, and we're going to sew our two pieces together. So no worries about how that's looking yet. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing to my other one. And then we are going to do our mattress stitching up the side. Okay, friends, so take care, enjoy the process, and we'll see you soon. <laughs> Once we have our ends done, now you can take a solid color, like this is changing color, so you can see the white and then it changes to make. If you can take the solid color from the head, if you're not gonna do a, a crochet um, edge on it, like what I'm going to do, you can go ahead and just use the solid color, and I should have mentioned that earlier, and go right across and then you're not gonna see your little side stitches, okay? But we're going to take our piece, you're going to assess which sides you like better, okay? Because two of them are gonna go on the inside. I like this pink and this purple side on this one, and I like the pink and the purple side on that one. So I'm gonna put the wrong sides together, okay? The wrong sides together. Then I'm going to take my piece and I'm gonna put it, so let me just straighten out this side here. We're gonna put it so we have our side seam. You see that? I've got my row now completely straight. Do I have that on the camera? Let me move this down just a little bit. This is going to be my side row right here, right there. And I have it all straightened out. If you need to put some stitch markers in there to hold it in place, you can do that, but you wanna straighten it all out like that. And you're gonna do that for the other one too. Find your side that you're gonna use, making sure that the wide part of the V is to the left and the point of the stitch is to the right on both pieces, and that's how we're gonna join them, okay? We're gonna put these together like that. I'm gonna smooth out the second one as I go along because I find that easy to do. But if you have a difficult time doing that, then then you smooth it out, you stitch, put stitch markers in there to hold your row in place so that you can see it, and then um, it'll make it easier for you. Once you get your rows lined up evenly, you're going to take your needle and you're going to put a yarn in it that goes the length of your project plus a little bit more, okay? And then we're gonna pick up the end. We're gonna put those two pieces together, the very side rows where the wide part of the V is going to the left, okay? Now, we're gonna just poke our needle in there just to, to join it, right on the very bottom there. Leave a bit of a tail for tying. And then what we're gonna do is you're going to take those two rows, hold them together like that, and you'll see the wide part of the V on each side is going to the left. We're going to go into that first stitch here, pick up that middle bar, go right underneath, pick up the second one. We're gonna pull this through. We're going to go over to here, to this other side. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going, but making sure we're starting on the right. We're going to po poke our needle in that top stitch, pick up that first center bar. You'll see it a little bit easier as I go down because it's tight when it's at the top. And then you're gonna pick up the second one and you're gonna pull that through. This is the invisible join. Part of me is wishing I would have used different yarn for this because it's so staticky. I think it's hard for you to see, but the end result is going to be so pretty. So you can persevere through it. So here's the stitch where this yarn tail is coming out of. Okay. So we're going to go into that very stitch. We're going to pick up that center bar of that next stitch and the center bar of the next one. Always two bars. We're going to pull that through. Okay. Give that a little twist so that you can, uh, Get that row lined up. Here's where it's coming out. We're gonna go in, we're gonna pick up two bars. 
just like that. Once you get the hang of this, friends, if you haven't done this before, it's fun to do. It's it's um not hard. You just got to go in where it's coming out. Pick up two stitches. See the very hard the the hardest part for you to see me do is the top there. I'm going to go into that same stitch, pick up two bars. I'm going to go down quite a ways before I actually tighten it and you'll see in just a second. I'm going to get that tail out of the way. We're going to continue to smooth this out so we have that same row that we're following down. I'm going to go in, I'm going to pick up two. Just like that. You see where it's coming out here? I'm going to go in and I'm going to pick up two. Let's do it two more times together and then we'll tighten this, okay? So I'm going to straighten out my row. It's easy to find that same row. You just follow the, the uh, where this one went in, you know that's the row you're following. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to pick up two bars, pull that through. It's coming out of that one there. I'm going to pick up two bars and pull it through. Let's do that one more time. Straightening this out, going in where I came out, picking up two bars, going over to the other side, picking up two bars. And when you have that done, all you got to do is take your tails on both ends and give it a little pull away from each other, both tails away from each other. And that's going to join your, your, um, your work as though it's one piece. You're gonna continue doing that all the way up. And if I do another 10 stitches or so, then I'm gonna pinch it here and I'm gonna pull my yarn. I'm gonna keep going, pinch it, pull my yarn. And uh, when I get to the top, we're gonna to close it off together. Okay, friends? So you just continue on your merry old way. Don't get discouraged, take your time. Just find that row that you're working on, just like that. And you can tell because your yarn is coming out of that one. So I know I, this is twisted in a little bit. I got to untwist it. I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to pick up two bars. One and two. And I'm going to go over to the other side. Do the same thing. And again, when I want to tighten it, I'm going to pinch and pull. I'll see you when you get to the end. Once you have that side finished, you're going to... Cross this over, being sure that you don't tighten this drawstring yet from, from the head. We don't need to do that yet. We're going to now do the other side. So you're going to do the same thing. You're going to find your, your very side row. And if your side row naturally goes to one where the point of the stitch is to the left, then just give it a quarter of a turn or a half a turn there to get to that next um, stitch where the top part of the V is going to the left, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn. You guys, this is going to be beautiful. This yarn is a little bit finicky to work with, which I've said already. Um, but it's uh, when the project is, is done, it's always gorgeous when you use this yarn. Um, it breaks easy when you're pulling, but once it's all together, it's sturdy. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> but I love it. Okay, so we're going to go in, pick up two bars. Pull it through. I'm going to go in, pick up two bars, pull it through. Okay. This is solid, so it might be um, easier for you to see than on that other side. I'm going to go in, pick up two bars, and pull it through. Go in where I came out, pick up two bars. And once you get the hang of this mattress stitch, friends, it goes so quickly. You can, if you're making a blanket, anything, and you use a stitch, once you get the, once you can visualize it and you stay on that same row, you can whip your sides together in no problem. Some people are afraid of this stitch, but don't be. Once, like, it's like anything. Once you learn it, you got it. Okay? So I am going to continue all the way up. I'm going to tie it off, hide my end, and then we're going to close the, the head. Okay, friends? Enjoy the process. I'll see you in a bit. All right, I've got it up to the second row from the top. Leave one or two stitches at the top there. I'm gonna pinch this and pull it. You can actually, because of the length of it, you can pull it from both sides, but I'm going to then 
just do a nice little knot in here. Hide my yarn tails into my work, cut it off. I'm going to go down to the bottom here and finish this before we work on the head. You're just going to do the same thing. You're going to tie it off. Now that you know your rows are all straight, grab that very top stitch on that piece and the very top stitch or last stitch on that piece. Then it brings it together at the bottom as well and you have a very nice join. Looks like it's one piece. Knot that off. And go ahead and hide your tail. Go ahead and do it on the other side. You know, I mentioned that I might do a crochet border. And you will have seen if I did at the beginning when you looked at the picture. <laughs> but now that I'm finishing this off, I don't know that I will because I kind of like it actually. And we're going to put a ribbon in there. And it's going to be beautiful. I'm going to hide that. Snip it off. But I haven't decided yet. Sometimes I make my decisions probably the same way you do. You wait till you're... Um, at that point and then you decide but my goodness you guys this is when they don't stuff this with pajamas they're going to have it as a nice soft little blanket um, cozy animal to hold and it's just going to be just going to be their favorite thing okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top here we've got to cinch our two pieces so we've got two pieces there we're going to just take one I'm going to cut this off just a little bit so it's not snagging and getting in my way we're going to take that end and as you close it up smooth it out smooth the top out so that you have a nice smooth edge okay if you just pull it you're not going to have a nice smooth edge now what we're going to do is we're going to take this end and we're going to put it on our needle and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to re reinforce this single one now you're going to have two of these because you're going to do it on the other side as well and, but we're going to put them together as though they are one, okay? But I still want to just, I think with anything for kids, if you can reinforce the top just a little bit by going around that first row of stitches, it just makes your project more sturdy, okay? So go ahead. Reinforce it. I'm going to go around twice for this one. Just like so. And then knot it off. This tail you can uh, just tuck in because we'll keep the other one. We'll use the other one for stitching the two together. So I'm going to knot that off, push that down with my thumb. I'm going to hide that into my work. And I'm going to go ahead and do that same exact thing to this other side, making sure again, my sweet friends, that you smooth this out as you pull it. Okay, so smooth, smooth out this whole piece. See that little piece would have stayed up there and you would have had a really messy looking top. So go ahead, do the same thing to this side as we did to that side and then I'll meet you back. Once you got that done, you're going to put the two pieces side by side just together like that here's the center of that one in the back here's the center of this one i'm going to take my needle i'm going to go around this half the top row of stitches like we did when we reinforced it and i'm going to once i get to the end here or to the middle here i'm going to pick up on the other side just like that i'm going to make these two into one i'm going to continue around the top of this one till i get to this side and then i'm going to pick up this side just like so okay give that a little pull we've now joined them made the two one it's like magic but it's so fun and it's very well reinforced it's not going to come apart now i'm going to just go around again just like that now you'll notice that we've got just a little bit of a hole in there from from the one side, just a very small one. So you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna take your needle to that point right there, and you're going to grab into the center of the stitch as though you're doing a mattress stitch, but you're not gonna be so concerned about grabbing the center. 
like the exact piece that you did before. You're just going to go to the inside and grab a little bit of it there just to close this little tiny space up. Okay, so I'm just going to grab two bars there. I'm going to take this, go back up to my center. I'm going to go around to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing. There's just a tiny wee. This one, oh, this one doesn't even have it. So I'm good there, okay? And then, there we go. We've got our piece ready to be stuffed for the head. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide this end. I don't like this little section right here. So I'm actually going to bring it together. There we go. Maybe that was where the opening was that I couldn't see. And I'm going to knot this off one more time. Pop this through the center. Let me put my right hand in there and see if I can maneuver a left-handed action. Pop that in there. Grab it with my hand on the inside so I don't snag my work. Pull it through. Cut it off. And there we've got our piece. Now what we're going to do is you're going to get a piece of yarn. If you're using this forever fleece finer yarn do a double strand um, if you're using or you can just grab some worsted weight yarn and use that too because you're not going to see it but we're going to go along the border here of our head so we can um, we can go ahead and cinch it so I'm going to grab this color of yarn here and I'll be right back with you what we're going to do here is we are going to find where our separation is for where we changed our colors and you can see that it's right here okay I'm going to go under one stitch, pick it up, go over the next, under, over, under, and you don't have to go through both layers. You just go through the one, the top layer, just like that. Pull it through and continue around over, under, over, under. Changing colors makes it very, very easy because you can easily see your row. And we're going to use this to cinch our head. Once we get that around, you're going to want to grab your fiber fill because the next part we're going, to, we're going to do is the head. And then our little guy is going to start to take shape. Okay. Almost there. Fast thing to do. Okay, so I'm going over this one, under this one, and then I'm just going to Take half of this next one so that I can bring this out into the same place. There we go. Now grab your fiber fill. I'm going to cut these off so I don't have such long strands to fight with. And we're going to stuff the head. All right, friends. So pretty. When you're stuffing, you take your fiber fill. I always pull mine apart a little bit. I think, I don't know, I just, like I say in a lot of my... Um, Addy knitting projects. I think it goes farther, but I could be wrong, but that's just my practice. We're going to stuff that head and you can pull on this a little bit to grab the shape, tighten it, and then just make a little tie like that so it's easily undone. Pop in your fiber fill. When you're filling anything, you don't want to see the fiber fill through the head or through the, through the work, which is why we double our work. But even still, when it starts to spread apart like that, you know you've got too much in there. I'm going to take a little bit out. I'm going to then push that right up into the top there. And then I'm going to untie this and I'm going to tighten it a little bit more. This time I'm going to actually tie it. Okay, just like that. And another little tip that I'll give to you when you're making a head, don't squish this like that so <laughs> the poor guy looks like he's choked. You want to make it nice and loose, okay? So you want to have the definition of what looks like shoulders there, but you don't want to have it so tight that the poor guy looks like you're choking him, okay? So we're going to tie this into a knot to hold that shape, just like that. Where's my sides? They're right here. Then you're going to just assess it and see if it's as full as you want it to be and I can already see these stitches are starting to spread so I'm not going to put any more in there I like it exactly like that okay so now I tightened that off really tight I'm gonna go ahead and 
hide these ends. I already hid one. Then you're going to grab your 12 peg loom. Okay. And we're going to finish off the face and the features. Okay. That's looking great. Oh, whoever's going to get this one is going to love it. It is so soft and there's just, there's lots of room in there to stuff their little pajamas or whatever little trinkets they want to hide. And we're going to cinch the bottom with a ribbon and we're going to do that after we make our facial features. So grab your 12 peg loom and I'll see you back friends. I've got my 12 peg loom in place. I've got my little help made here all ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the ears now. So to do the ears, we're going to do a drawstring cast on. To do our drawstring cast on, we're going to go behind that first peg, in front of the next, behind and in front, behind and in front, all the way around. You're going to be in front of that last peg, and you're going to continue on by going in front of that first peg. Okay, so we went behind the first, in front, behind, in front, behind, in front. Now for the second part of the cast on, we're going to go in front of that first peg and in front of all the pegs, just like that. How easy is that? Okay, I'm going to hold this. Oops. I'm going to hold that in place. And then you're going to knit off every peg that has two, two loops on it. Okay, so that it's every second one. So we started with the last one. We're going to skip this one, go to this next one, skip this one, go to the next one, and so on and so forth till we get all around the loom. That is our drawstring cast on. Now we can push those down and we are ready to begin. So to do this um, part of the project for the ears, we are going to knit, e-wrapped knit, 12 rows. So I'm gonna, oops, you know what? That was really loose because it fell out of this little tensioner. So I'm gonna put that back in the tensioner. No bother. And we're gonna go again. So we're gonna e-wrap that first, second, third. There, that feels better. There we go. And then I'm gonna just wrap it twice around that little peg before I was putting it in front, but I thought that would work good too. And then we're gonna knit off. every peg okay this whole project is done with e-wraps and so that's what makes it a quicker project but i did i truly do love the look of the e-wrap i do like the the um true knit as well but oh they're all nice but the the e-wrap not just because it's faster but because i just love how it looks i think it has a very soft look to it okay so we're going to mark that on our counter as row one, and we're gonna just continue. And we're going to do this for 10 rows, okay? So you see how fast that's gonna go then. This is row two, I'm gonna do 10 rows, and then once I get to 10 rows done, I uh, will see you back, and I'm gonna give you instructions then for the rest of the project. Um, because we're doing the same techniques all along, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do for the little nose, and I'm gonna tell you what you need to do for the arms. So you finish doing 10 rows of this, I'll come back and cast off with you, and then I will explain the rest of the project. Once you've finished your 10 rows, don't push them all the way down because it's easier to uh, take them off if they're not all the way down. You're gonna cut your tail, you can just leave that sticking out of your little stylus thing if uh, you, you've got one. And we're going to thread our needle and we're going to cast off. Going under that first one, just how we did before on the body. And the second, the third, all the way around. Then pick up number one again and uh, take your work off your, your loom. I've completed the, ca the cast off. I'm just taking it off the loom now, almost done. And we'll have a little look. Oops, always gotta be one that gives you a little trouble and snags your work, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so there's our little piece. I'm gonna give that a little stretch. I'm going to, we're going to work with this to make it the shape of an ear, so don't worry. This isn't what it's gonna look like, but you're gonna go make one more ear that's um, you're going to draw string cast on, you're going to do 10 rows, you're going to draw string cast off. That's two 
for both ears. Then you're gonna take the same loom, you're gonna take uh, the same yarn or your yarn of choice. If you wanna do the, the same one that you did for the body, that's fine, but I'm gonna stick with this one. And you're going to do a drawstring. This is for the arms. You're gonna do a drawstring cast on. Then you're gonna e-wrap 26 rows. Then you're going to cast off, just like what we just did. And then you're going to make two of those. Okay, so two ears, these are 10 rows with a drawstring cast on, two arms, 26 rows with a drawstring cast on. Then you are going to take your white and you're going to make the nose. And to make the nose, you're going to do the exact same thing you did with the ears. You're gonna do a drawstring cast on, 10 rows and cast off. So your ears are 10 rows, your snout, for your for your face or your not snout that's not it's not a pig your, <laughs> your round circle for your nose is 10 rows and your arms are 26 okay so go ahead and get all of that done and when you have that done we are going to finish the assembly part and it's gonna be great all right friends go go have at her and, and i'll see you in just a little bit i am back with you surprisingly that didn't take too long now i have made Two of these, two ears, two arms, one nose. I already attached the one ear and the one arm, but I'm gonna show you that in a second. But let's just take our ear, just like this, okay? We're gonna give it a little stretch to line up all those rows. Then we're gonna take our end tail, either end, and we're gonna drawstring close it. Cinch it closed from that drawstring. I had dropped a stitch there, and I thought I picked it up correctly, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna grab it with my needle there. You won't have that problem if you didn't make a mistake. And then I'm going to just sew around to reinforce this one time. Pull it tight. Make a little knot. Just have to do one because push that down with my thumb because I'm gonna tie it to this other side. We're going to pop that down through the center of the piece, pull it out the other end, and pull that end with it, okay? So it's in half, our piece is now in half. We're gonna take that other tail, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just cinch around the outside, cut this one off. Not all the way, but just enough so that you have a tail to tie. Okay, and I'm gonna go around and reinforce this, this little guy too. Just like that. I actually um, like this side better than the other side, so I'm going to put this back through the center. Usually I would have tied off and had this, had my tails on, on this side and then use the other side, but I'm going to put this back into the other side. You don't have to do this step. You can just use, um, you can pretend this is the side you just closed. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, then you're going to just tighten those two so that the inside one is up close to the outside one. Give it a good knot. Okay. Then you're going to hide this short tail. I'm going to put it in between my work. Cut it off. I'm going to now take this one. I'm going to put it in between my work and take it all the way to the edge. Doesn't matter where your edge is, any edge, okay? Any part along the side there. And I'm going to tie a knot. The reason why I'm tying a knot is so if I pull on this, I'm not going to gather it in here, okay? Then what we're going to do is where that knot is, we're going to put that off to the side. Then we're going to take our piece. You could close it like this, but I don't want to do that. First, I'm going to gather it. I'm going to go underneath the one row, over the next, under the next, over, under, over, under, all on the top edge here. over, under, over, under, just till you get around. Stick two fingers in there, literally stick two fingers in there, then tighten it and tie a knot. 
just like that. Okay. Then you've got a little, little opening. That's all I want. I wanted to bring it together, but I didn't, I didn't want to have it completely closed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because if I wouldn't have done this, I would have cinched it and it would have been tight like that. So I wanted to have a little opening so I could make a flatter edge. So now all we're going to do is sew across. Just pick up the top, top row of those stitches there, just like that. This is going to be against the head, so you don't have to be too particular. Then I'm going to tie off a knot, okay? And there I've got my my ear. I'm going to grab my, my piece. You're going to decide which side you like better, okay? I think they were both beautiful, but I liked this one a little bit better. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your ear. Oh, and we have one more thing to do before we take that ear and place it. Now that I have that in the corner, I'm going to just take this across, just weave it in and out just a little bit to the other side. And then I'm going to just pull it in just so I have a better shape, okay? It was totally straight before. I'm gonna just pull it in so that I have a more of a rounded end. Then I'm gonna tie this off again. And now it's ready to go on, okay? So then I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it opposite the other one. And where I place it is here's our seam. This is the middle. I just put like a sideways finger. So I'm going to put a sideways finger <laughs> and then I'm going to determine, okay, if this is my seam, I'm going to go one row over to the front. Okay. And then I'm going to, from there, I'm going to take it back into my work just along the bottom. I'm going to keep it loose until I get a few stitches on. So then um, it's easier to, for you to see. And then I'm going to grab both layers there, grab the bottom edge and then pull and I'm going to follow that same row down that I was sewing it onto and I don't um, tie off I have this one that's not knotted off because if I have to change anything it's easier to do um, if they're not tied down and the same with the arms I this one's attached but it's not tied off in case I have to take it off for any reason to relocate it okay so I'm going to go this head looks a little bit wider on this side but I'm going to play with that I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish sewing that down just like I showed you. And uh, when I get to the edge, I'll come back and show you a little trick I do. All right, I'm at the end. Instead of going here and tacking it down, I go up a stitch, up the side. And then I go back into the head and go into the, I'm going to actually go up to the very top because I want to do the same thing to this corner. Am I in the camera? Nope, I'm not. So there we go. So I went up through this stitch and then I'm going to go back down into my piece and out the other corner and by doing that and then I pull on it I make a rounded edge that looks like it's you know softer and smoother than if I was to leave a corner there and I try to do that for the other edge too so then I take and I didn't do it when I added this so I'm going to go it to that one I'm going to go up and take the top stitch and then I'm going to go back down bring it up into the middle And bring that corner in just like that this head looks a little bit deformed but I just noticed remember I couldn't find that hole there it is so now that I have this yarn tail I'm gonna go ahead and fix that easy fix that's why it was looking off centered to me because it's not snug and tight okay but you know what hey doesn't matter we just fix it you poor little bear okay Pull on that. I'm gonna get one more in there. And one more. That's nice and closed. I'm gonna bring that back down through here and I'm gonna close it at the back of the ear. Knot it off at the back of the ear, okay? Looks kind of funny to me. Why are you looking funny? little guy well I'm gonna put the other arm on and then I'm gonna assess the situation <laughs> okay
Okay, I might need to put just a little bit more filling in there and I can because I've got that hole. So um, I think that's part of the problem. I'm gonna put just a little bit more filling in there and sort it around. Then I'm going to figure out what's going on here. And then we're going to add the nose. I think that that has to come down a little bit further. Ears are sometimes a hard thing to put on. You gotta really play with it to make sure that they're that they're equal, but that's, I think, the problem. Look at that, let's bring that down. <laughs> so I'm gonna come back and go up one more stitch there and tie that down and that will be actually perfect, okay? So now we're gonna take our arm and we are going to cinch, I already pulled this one end, cinch it closed, any side you start with, okay? Cinch it closed, pop that needle into the middle of that top there, that center, and bring it through. Making sure you don't snag the side wall as you do so. Okay, bring it through. And bring that half through as well with it. Then you're gonna cinch up this side. I'm going to give this a little bit of a cut to make it a little shorter. I'm gonna reinforce around that end. Just like what we've been doing, okay? So just once around is good. Just like that. And then tie these two together, nice firm knot. And you're going to cut those off. Turn it the other way. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add a piece to our, need to our needle so that we can um, finish the end here. I've gone ahead and I've tied a piece on. We're going to do the same thing for this as what we did with the ears. Okay, just to close it a little bit. I don't want to have it completely cinched. I just want to make it a little bit narrower. So under and over, under and over, under and over. Before you pull that tight, you're gonna grab some fiber fill. And you're going to pop it in there. I didn't, I didn't do it very tight. Um, I just want a nice loose stuff. Nice soft stuffing. That's too much. Just so it takes the form but it doesn't stretch out the stitches so you see the fiber fill and it's just nice and soft. Measure it to the other one, that's perfect, okay? So now what you're gonna do is you're going to do what we did to the ear. You're going to put two fingers in there. You're gonna pull it and you're gonna tighten it. You're gonna sew this up, but make a little knot there and just go back and forth. If you want your ears to be a little bit narrower at the bottom, just do one finger. Okay, and we're gonna close this up with a knot. Then for my arms, I take it into the set, my yarn tail into the center. So I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna come up in the center and then I'm gonna tie another knot just so that uh, when I pull on this, it doesn't, doesn't gather in here. And then I'm gonna take that little arm and the reason why I put this in the center is because now all I have to do is find the center of this. Oops, get that little guy out of the way. So our center is where we sewed it up together, right along here. And if I take that center piece at the neck, and now I just grab some stitches, I don't need to go that wild, I have put the center of my arm on the center of my piece and it's perfect. Okay, and now I'm just gonna sew it on. So I'm just gonna do what we did with the ear basically. Take a piece from there, go into my neck, grab some stitches. And I'm just gonna show you this one side because I do the same with my corners on the shoulders as I do with the ears. One more little piece there. And then I'm gonna take up the side, maybe two stitches down, one for sure. And then go back in I'm gonna come up to the center. And when I pull on that, it rounds, see how that rounds it off? It just gives it a way nicer finish. Now go ahead and do the same to the other side and when you have that all put on and your ears and your arms placed where you want them to be, you can 
Tie it off in a knot and hide your ends, and then I'll see you back. I believe I have everything placed how I want it. Now we're gonna take our piece. Now I said that I was gonna do white, um, but I ran out of white, and so I had this light color of pink, and I actually quite like it. So it's the pink that's in the bear, it's the same yarn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that one end, we're going to reinforce around it. We're going to bring it through to the other end, just like what we did um, with our ears and with our arms, okay? But I'm going to, there's no need to reinforce this one because it's going to, uh, it's gonna be pretty secure. We're gonna have other yarn over it, okay? With black yarn, we're gonna sew over it. So it's not gonna, not gonna go anywhere. Then you're going to bring that yarn tail through, tighten this one. Pull it down so you have a little circle there. You see what I've done? We've just pulled the ends into each other and we're gonna tie them off. To make a little circle. And I'm going to just do a triple knot. Just cut that off like that. I'm going to add a piece of yarn up to the top here, a longer one, just like so. Just gonna hide this one. I could have just left it in the middle too, but I don't want it to pop out because it's on the side, so I'm just gonna hide it that way, then cut it off. And then we are going to sew our little piece on. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little bear. You're gonna have him sitting nicely in front of you. Honestly, you guys, this is so cute. I love these colors. And we're going to pop them onto the front of the face, just, just like that. And I always put the seam up at the top here because we're gonna cover that with with black thread. So just line it up so it's at the in the middle of the face, but you got some space between your neck and your the top two fingers. <laughs> and we're gonna sew it on. And you're gonna go as close to the piece as you can, picking up all layers, then come up. You do not wanna see lines going across like this. That just takes away from, from the detail work of your project, okay? So you're just going to Grab right from the, right beside the edge and come up. Just like that. Into the work, come up. Just on the edge of the piece. Into the work, even under some of the stuffing, give it a little bit more security. And go all the way around your piece, knot it off, hide your tail. Once that is on, we're going to grab our black yarn. I don't have the black yarn in the same yarn, so I'm just using um, Bernat Premium yarn. Doesn't matter, okay? And we're going to go in the side of the head. I'm gonna take a, actually a longer needle. It makes the work project much easier. These wool needles, metal wool needles, you can get them, I think I mentioned it once already, but they come in um, three different lengths, three different sizes, and uh, they're just wonderful to use. You can get them in Amazon or Walmart, or I'm sure lots of other different places as well. But we're gonna come up the side, and up on the side of the, at the very top here, we're gonna make, it's gonna be like a line here, sort of, so to speak. We're gonna go from there, down, Here's the middle. We're gonna go above the middle, just barely, but just above the middle, and come across to this side about the same distance, okay? Then we're gonna go back down into the middle, back up, just like that. Now don't make your nose from here to here, don't make it so wide that all you see is a big black thing on their head. Um, you, you wanna just make it nice and uh, just a nice size. So I'm gonna go from there back down into a point and I'm gonna come up right to the edge of that little circle. Use your fingernail or your needle to guide that down right beside it so it's nice and smooth. You don't wanna have these all messy either. You're gonna come back up and you're gonna to go to the top of that circle right beside that last line and you're gonna guide that down detail 
attention to detail is important again because you don't want this all these lines to overlap each other and be all squiggly and all messy you want it to be neat so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to do that following this line all around here um, right across until I get to this side. Sometimes when this looks like it's a, it's becoming a straight line, you just go down a little bit further and you make it into a point again, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that now actually. I'm gonna go down a little bit further than where I my point initially was. Underneath the stuffing, up into the nose, top of the nose there, and reestablish my point. See, you do that whenever you feel you need to. You don't wanna get much lower than this circle though. Uh, hopefully I can just stay there, but we're going to just make it look how it needs to look. So go ahead, finish that nose, and I'll see you back. Once you have your nose the way you like it, I always then go back and do one more there and one more here. So you'll see how this is going to, by doing this ridge again, look how, or the edge, look at how that shapes it. That's how it was, and I'm going to do one more, but from there, I'm going to come up. Here's where the edge of my eye is. I'm going to go over about one row and up, or the edge of my nose, sorry. And then watch how this just changes. It's just a simple little thing, but it makes it perfect. I do that every time when I do a nose like this. I fill it all in, then I go back and I do one there and one there just to outline it more perfectly, okay? So I've gone up. Here's the corner of my nose, just over a little bit and up a stitch stitch and a half maybe. Then I'm going to go down to about there. Then I'm going to come over to the same place on this side. Oh, it's taking shape. So pretty. Go down, then under the stuffing, back up into this corner. back up. I like to go across like this because I think that uh, it strengthens it. It's not going to come apart like that. Then I'm going to double that one. And from there, I'm going to come back out the same spot I went in here. You're going to obviously need a very long piece of black yarn to do this, this part of the work. Okay. And <laughs> there it is. So you're going to cut this off. You're going to tie a knot. Remembering when you tie your first knot, like right here, you don't tighten it because then you're going to pull on the strand that's on the eye. You tighten the second one just like that. Pop this on your needle. Oh, I look forward to the day that the strength in my hand is back, <laughs> but I shall not complain. It's okay. I just look forward to it. There we go. Pull that out. Pull it up, cut it off, then take your needle, tuck that in, pull out where it was there. And friends, oh, he's adorable. Now all you gotta do is grab your lace. Whatever you wanna use to tie the bottom here, you go grab that. You might wanna make an eye cord with your, if you have a um, one of those little machines that make an eye cord, I have an Addy uh, egg that makes the eye cord, or you can use ribbon like what I'm going to do. I think ribbon makes it look pretty. I'm going to just take enough ribbon to wrap around twice, cut it off, might be too long, likely is, but it's okay. I get this ribbon for really cheap, not that I want to waste it, but um, it's not it's not expensive. So I'm going to thread my needle and I'm going to find the center of my piece. I'm going to go up a little ways. I want to leave a ridge because it looks nice then when you tie it. So I'm going to go up. Um, maybe one, two, three stitches. Let's do that. And then go under two rows, over two rows, under two rows, over two rows. Pull that through. And then we're going to go repeat that in the back. I'm going through all the layers. One, two, three, 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 three. Mm 
and hopefully we'll come out at the same place. Over, under, nope, that's perfect. Because we've got two, we've gone over and under two all the way around and we've got two left in the middle there. That way too much ribbon, but that's fine. We're gonna then take this and we're going to straighten it out. And of course it's not gonna stay straight, but you know, for presentation, you gotta make it perfect. <laughs> when you give it to somebody, make sure you straighten out the ribbon all the way around. We're gonna fill this little beauty with, I'm gonna cut this off right away because it is quite long with a pair of pajamas or whatever you want and then you're going to tie this up now i did get a comment from somebody um when i did this on my adding machine they said no little hands are going to be able to tie that and you're right they can they won't but mommy can <laughs> mommy or big sister big brother can tie that for them and tie a good knot um and you can teach them how to tie it when they get a little bit older or you can put velcro or you can do it however you like but you know what when they don't carry their pajamas in there, have their pajamas in there, they've got a beautiful, soft doll, teddy bear doll. And friends, seriously. <laughs> so friends, we've gone and done it. We've made ourselves a pajama bag bear. Isn't he just like, oh, I just love things like this. Even as an adult, it's like, put one on my bed, please. <laughs> so anyways, um, there it is. They can take the pajamas out of it and just have it as a soft toy uh, and, and just play with it. It's gonna be, be like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a keepsake for sure. So have fun making them. Uh, if you have baby shower gifts that you need to make perfect, little kids, um, children would love these for birthday gifts. Fill it with a pair of pajamas um, and away they go. They're gonna love putting this on their pillows. So take care friends. Thank you for joining me. And again, don't forget to like and subscribe, please. And come on over to my Facebook group and join us there. We have a lot of fun over there. Take care and we'll see you in the next video.